The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing us under of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly equipped unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Ephesians 4, 12 to 15, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ. Ephesians 4, 31-32 Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Proverbs 28, 13 He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. In preparation for our study of the Word of God today, the most... Uh, thing that we have to do is uh, we have to uh, set aside some few moments to uh, reflect and uh, meditate and examine our respective souls whether we still have sins personal sins so for the next moments will be devoted to silent prayer the objective of which is to make sure that we are filled with the Holy Spirit as we approach the Word of God. So silent prayer gives us the privacy of the priesthood and makes the option of rebound possible if necessary. But for you unbeliever, the issue you're facing is not rebound, not confession, but faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Therefore, let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful to you for the privilege of having the freedom to assemble ourselves together once again in this Bible study through the YouTube to focus our attention upon your word, which is forever a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you, Father, that you have preserved your word in writing for it, both in the original languages as well as in translation. You have provided the activated human spirit for faith perception of doctrine. You have provided God the Holy Spirit, who is the ultimate teacher and the gift of pastor-teacher for communication of doctrine, so that every believer can consume the oxygen of the spiritual life, your word, and growth from infancy to adolescence, and from adolescence on to maturity and fulfill the purpose for which you have left every believer in this life. 
And we know, Father, the greater knowledge of doctrine, the greater the growth, the greater the blessing, the greater impact, the greater production of divine good, the greater the reward in the eternal state. And there is every benefit and no detriment to growing in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so, as we approach the study of your word, we ask that you open our hearts to the truth that we may fulfill that divine mandate of spiritual growth. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Welcome everyone to our daily Bible study and uh, we are still concentrating on our topic, the Great Power Experiment. Okay, let us continue what we uh, uh, stopped in our discussion yesterday. First of all, there are people who ask, why do people go to the lake of fire or hell? Well, listen, people go to the lake of fire or hell because of their volition's decision to go there. One cannot go to hell because of their sins or because they have not sinned. It is only because they rejected Christ as their Savior. It is faith alone in Christ alone. We always say this. We always quote this. So it will sink in the mentality of every believer. And, of course, for every unbeliever to learn about this particular doctrine. But it is a matter of choice. You may or may not avail of this. So we are concentrating our study on the great power experiment. And you know, there are two categories of the great power experiment. One, our Lord Jesus Christ's hypostatic union. And two, the great power experiment of the church age, where you and I belong. Now, as far as our Lord Jesus Christ's hypostatic union, our Lord's using the assets that God the Father gave him. He did not use his divine omnipotence. He remained perfect while on earth, even to the point of his physical death. Now, uh, talking about the great power experiment of the church age, believers of this age, this is what we are talking about, the great power experiment of believers of this church age. God the Father's omnipotence empowered our Lord Jesus Christ by restoring his body into a resurrection body. You can read about this in Acts chapter 2 verse 24, Ephesians 1 20, and 1 Thessalonians 1 10. Now, God the Holy Spirit's omnipotence empowered our Lord Jesus Christ to be able to fulfill God's plan. That is in 1 Peter 3, 18. Now, <clears throat> talking about portfolio of invisible assets, God has provided this portfolio of invisible assets for every believer. In other words, God provided these assets to us believers. That's why in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, the Word of God says, We no longer walk by sight, but by faith. Now, in eternity past, God already provided believers the portfolio of invisible assets. Faith, okay, touching about faith. It is what we have to use to be able to move on in our spiritual life. That's why Romans 10, 17, we always quote this, Faith cometh by hearing, 
and hearing by the word of God. And don't you ever forget this in Second Peter 3.18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Remember, the Holy Spirit's omnipotence is only available inside the divine atmosphere. That is why the problem-solving devices, number one, is rebound. First John 1 John 1.9. That is the divine step to enter the divine atmosphere. Then we can continue moving on in our spiritual life, fulfilling the protocol plan of God. Without using rebound, the first problem-solving device, then we cannot enter the operational divine atmosphere, and we cannot continue moving on in our spiritual life, and we cannot fulfill the protocol plan of God. You see how critical is this? The Holy Spirit's power was the one who sustained the Lord Jesus Christ inside the prototype divine atmosphere. Now the same power sustains the church age believer inside his operational divine atmosphere. In John 10, 17, the Word of God says, The reason the Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. Verse 18, No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up, take it up again. This command I received from my Father. Those are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ gives up His life, His Spirit. Our Lord had His power to lay down His life and also the power to restore His human life again. And this very power of God the Father, great power experiment, is now available to all believers. All believers, okay? This is now available to all believers to be able to become victorious in life. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ avail of the following. The Holy Spirit's omnipotence inside His prototype divine atmosphere, and the plus H, perfect happiness, sharing the happiness of God as a problem-solving device. The same power the omnipotence of God the Father, the same power that resurrected our Lord, is the same power that will resurrect all believers during the rapture. Between Christ's resurrection and the resurrection of church age believers is what we call the greatest power period in all of human history. God's power is available to every believer right at this very moment. Did you get that? In Philippians 3.10, it says, I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death. And so, somehow, to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Remember the three stages of the area of spiritual adulthood. Remember? Spiritual self-esteem, spiritual autonomy, and spiritual maturity. By the way, we can build a garrison in our soul through the problem-solving devices in the area of spiritual adulthood. Our Lord Jesus Christ's power of His resurrection means God the Father's and God the Holy Spirit's omnipotence. You notice we are repeating these things? We keep repeating this. We have to, because this is what we call inculcation. Remember reception, retention, and recall? 
reception, assimilating God's word, retention, retaining, keeping that intact, and then recall. You remember them. You reverse concentrate them. Now, talking about Christocentric dispensation, there were two categories of power there. The great power experiment of the hypostatic union and the great power experiment of the church age. It is only in these two areas that God's power was provided to all church age believers. Not in any other area or dispensation was this power provided. The Gospels, the New Testament, talks about the hypostatic union. In the Acts, it talks about the assets that are left for our Lord Jesus Christ to use. In the epistles, it talks about these assets used by the Lord Jesus Christ and are now left to us church age believers. You see, when God provides, He is fair. No exception. So with salvation. Salvation is equally for all unbelievers. So with blessings. Divine blessings are equally provided for all mature believers. Hence, God is fair. According to Philippians 3.10, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. How do we know Him? The answer is by doing what we are doing, by studying the Bible. To know Him, well, of course, there are three areas, spiritual skills, spiritual self-esteem, spiritual autonomy, and spiritual maturity. Then we have to reach the area of spiritual adulthood. What is the purpose? of our study in God's Word? Now, this is a very basic question. What is the purpose of our study in God's Word every day? Of course, the answers are the following. To make Christ real to our life. To know God. To love God. To serve God. To please God. To know God's plan for our life and to be able to live with God forever in heaven. But while we are here in phase two, we have to prioritize God's word until we are occupied with Christ. But we have to be tested when we accumulated Bible doctrines and grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ until we have reached spiritual maturity. Listen, our Lord Jesus Christ went through all sufferings in His passion and was able to be victorious against death. That was His strategic victory. Remember, X radical plus Y radical and Z radical? X radical, when a person is still an unbeliever. He has hope, number one, to be a believer. Plus, why radical? Supposing that person believes in Christ, he becomes a believer in time, and then he faces hope, number two, to receive escrow blessings in time. And then plus, Z radical, he is now a believer in eternity. He is promoted to phase three. Therefore, he has hope number three, to receive blessings in eternity. Did you get that? Now, as a believer, remember that all the divine assets are available to you now. So you have no reason not to be a winner, believer. Did you get that? But again, it's a matter of choice. Your volition is at stake. At the point 
of salvation. God the Holy Spirit comes into the inside, in the believer's body, forever. A believer, however, cannot live the spiritual life without Bible doctrine in his soul. That's what I have been telling you. Without studying God's Word, then there is no way for him to live the spiritual life. Acts 1.5 says, Extension of the great power experiment of the hypostatic union. That's baptism of the Holy Spirit. A believer has to consider the ministry of the Holy Spirit if he wants to live the Christian way of life. Listen, the Christian way of life cannot be lived through human way, only through the spiritual way. Our Lord Jesus Christ's royal titles, patent, you remember? Number one, divine royalty. That's his title, Son of God. As eternal, infinite God, His eternal family are the following, God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Number two, Jewish royalty, as Son of David. That's His title. That's in Romans 1, 1 to 4. His humanity, okay? Davidic dynasty, Jewish. Number three, is battlefield royalty related to our Lord Jesus Christ's resurrection and ascension as perfect God-man under the hypostatic union. His title, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Bright Morning Star. So in the battlefield royalty, that includes strategic victory, what our Lord Jesus Christ experienced on the cross and what he left to the church age. And then tactical victory. This is for all believers to use God's spiritual assets to experience. Now each believer's soul is the spiritual battlefield and the Lord Jesus Christ is the commander-in-chief. It is true that believers, Christians, have the power that God had provided. But the question is, so many Christians do not know how to use this power. It is really tragic. But why? You know why? The answer is because these Christians have no knowledge, no clue, about God's mandate on knowing and learning this power. In a nutshell, this kind of believers are negative, recalcitrant, no interest, no desire to study God's Word. Remember, without studying, learning, believing, and applying God's Word, a believer's Christian life is ineffective. Did you hear it right? He is only a casualty in the angelic conflict or spiritual warfare. But God wants believers to be filled by God the Holy Spirit inside the operational divine atmosphere so he can fulfill the protocol plan of God. You remember protocol? Again, we will quote the definition of protocol, it means doing the right thing in the right way, not otherwise. To be inside the protocol plan of God or operational divine atmosphere is to imitate our Lord Jesus Christ so that we believers can reach and acquire the tactical victory. Remember, God the Holy Spirit sealed all believers at the point of salvation. So even if the Holy Spirit is inside our body, we still have the old sin nature, remember that? So, if this is the case, there is a fight, remember? 
It is an inner full-scale battle, the angelic conflict, or the uh, common term is spiritual warfare. So we need the sword of the Spirit. What is the sword of the Spirit? It's the Word of God. A believer can only make use of God's power by learning this power. Study, learn, believe, apply. Remember the uh, memory aid that I gave you? Operation PMA? P, perception. M, metabolization. A, application. Don't forget all this. Use this power to combat our enemy. Discernment is needed not to be deceived by Satan. God's arch enemy, Satan. Let God the Holy Spirit metabolize the Bible doctrine you studied, you learned, you believed, and you applied. Thus, God becomes real to your life. This is how to experience the power of God. But always bear in mind, we have to keep on keeping on in our spiritual momentum. This is what we are doing every day, advancing in our spiritual life. Keep on keeping on in our spiritual momentum. Also remember the doctrine of rebound. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. By doing so, by making it as our routine, making it a second nature to our life, that will make us humble. So we become teachable. Remember, the rate of learning must exceed the rate of forgetting. All of these things we are talking about are just the result of our spiritual momentum. Tomorrow we are going to discuss the tactical victory that we need, the things or the requirements to be able to attain our tactical victory as believers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that so great salvation that we received from you. We thank you for sending to us your only begotten Son for becoming our substitute in paying for our sins. And now, as your children, we pray that you will guide us in our Christian life that we may be able to attain our spiritual goal, which is spiritual maturity, the capacity stage. Make these things that we discuss today a blessing to our life. Thank you once again for this Bible study through the YouTube of the Vic Balbido Evangelistic Ministry. Make this ministry an instrument in spreading your word in spreading the gospel. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen.